Hallelujah. He is risen. He, he is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Hallelujah. Good morning, St. John family. Please join us as we worship our risen King in our opening hymn. Happy Easter, Church. Welcome to our worship gathering for the second Sunday of the Easter season. Today, Vicar Rick McCafferty will share his sermon with us called No Doubt, K-N-O-W, Doubt. We're going to hear the story about Thomas, who was not there when the other disciples were to see Jesus alive in the flesh, raised from the dead. And so Thomas, he had his disbelief. We're going to hear about what it's like as Christians to know doubt, but to know our Savior as well. Uh, today, this is Vicar Rick's last sermon as Vicar Rick. Probably not his last sermon here at St. John, but his last one as our vicar. He's completed his studies with Concordia Seminary in St. Louis, Missouri, and he is awaiting his call from Lutheran Indian Ministries. And there will be a call day ceremony from the seminary soon, and we're going to host a watch party so that we can watch Vicar Rick receive his call virtually, digitally, but nonetheless, it's Jesus' call into the pastoral ministry. So we look forward to one more opportunity to hear our vicar deliver God's word today. We're going to continue with the remembrance of our baptism, calling on God's name in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, amid these present doubts and fears, your gift of faith gives me the confidence that you are continually by my side. Root out areas of doubt. Help my faith to be turned to sight. As I wait until that day of unending glory with my Savior, teach me to live as a reflection of your love. Help me serve you and others in truth, giving honor to you. Through Jesus Christ, my risen Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We take time now to humble ourselves before our Lord, confessing our sins to him. We begin with the song. As we confess our sins this morning, we do so to a God 
whose ways are higher than our ways, whose thoughts are higher than our thoughts, but he knows the mercy we need. And he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and cleanse us from our unrighteousness. I am not skilled to understand What God has willed, what God has planned I only know at His right hand Stands one who is my Savior I take Him at His word and deed Christ died to save me, this I read. And in my heart I find a need for Him to be my Savior, that He would leave His place on high and come for sinful man to die. Counted strange, so once did I. Before I knew my Savior, my Savior loves, my Savior lives, my Savior's always there for me. My God, He was, my God, He is, my God, He's always gonna be. My Savior loves, my Savior lives, my Savior's always there for me. My God, He was, my God, He is. My God is always going to be. Like Thomas, I cannot bring myself to fully acknowledge that you are in complete control and that you have my highest good in mind. I am worried and sometimes discouraged. I give myself over to what my eyes and ears perceive and I turn away from your voice and influence in my life. God we confessed our sins to is a God who is faithful beyond measure. Even if we are faithless, he remains faithful. We know that Jesus gave the perfect act of faithfulness by trusting his Father to the point of death, even death on a cross. And giving his life away as he did, he canceled out all of our debts of doubt and disbelief and every sin now we stand before God with the confidence of knowing a resurrected Christ. Because Jesus was raised to new life, we trust that his forgiveness was full at the cross. And I can stand before you and announce on behalf of Jesus that your sins are forgiven. God is gracious to you. As a called and ordained servant of the word, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Yes, living, dying, let me bring My strength, my soul is from this spring that he who lives to be my king once died to be my savior that he would leave his place on high and come for sinful man to die you count it strange so once did i Savior, 
My Savior loves, my Savior lives, my Savior's always there for me. My God, He was, my God, He is, my God, He's always going to be. My Savior loves, my Savior lives, my Savior's always there for me. My God, He was, my God, He is, my God, He's always going to be. I am not skilled to understand. What God has willed, what God has planned. I only know at His right hand stands one who is my Savior. We thank Dana for reading God's Word to us today. The first reading comes from Acts chapter 5. But Peter and the apostles answered, We must obey God rather than men. The God of our fathers raised Jesus, whom you killed by hanging him on a tree. God exalted him at his right hand as leader and savior, to give repentance to Israel and for forgiveness of sins. And we are witnesses to these things, and so is the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey him. When they heard this, they were enraged and wanted to kill them. But a Pharisee in the council named Gamaliel, a teacher of the law held in honor by all the people, stood up and gave orders to put the men outside for a little while. And he said to them, Men of Israel, take care what you are about to do with these men. For before these days, Thaddeus rose up, claiming to be somebody, and a number of men, about four hundred, joined him. He was killed, and all who followed him were dispersed and came to nothing. After him, Judas the Galilean rose up in the days of the census and drew away some of the people after him. He too perished, and all who followed him were scattered. So in the present case I tell you, keep away from these men and let them alone. For if this plan or this undertaking is of man, it will fail. But if it is of God, you will not be able to overthrow them. You might even be found opposing God. So they took his advice, and when they had called the apostles in, they beat them and charged them not to speak in the name of Jesus, and let them go. Then they left the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer dishonor for the name. And every day in the temple, and from house to house, they did not cease teaching and preaching that Christ is Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. The second reading comes from 1 Peter chapter 1. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to his great mercy, he has caused us to be born again to a living hope, through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who by God's power are being guarded through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, though now for a little while, if necessary, you have been grieved by various trials, so that the tested genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold that perishes though it is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Though you have not seen him, you love him. Though you do not now see him, you believe in him and rejoice with joy that is inexpressible and filled with glory, obtaining the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. This is the word of the Lord. Dana, thank you for reading God's word to us. We have one more Bible reading, and I invite you at home to stand where you are for the reading of the Holy Gospel. I'll give you a moment to get to your feet. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 20th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. On the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you withhold forgiveness from any, it is withheld. Now, Thomas... One of the twelve, called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. So the disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, 
Unless I see in his hands the mark of the nails and place my finger into the mark of the nails and place my hand into his side, I will never believe. Eight days later, his disciples were inside again and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands and put out your hand and place it in my side. Do not disbelieve, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you've seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing, you may have life in his name. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. For our confession of faith this morning, we use the third article of the Apostles' Creed and its explanation from Martin Luther's small catechism. So let's speak together the third article of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. What does this mean? Let's speak together. I believe that I cannot, by my own reason or strength, believe in Jesus Christ, my Lord, or come to him. But the Holy Spirit has called me by the gospel, enlightened me with his gifts, sanctified and kept me in the true faith. In the same way, he calls, gathers, enlightens, and sanctifies the whole Christian church on earth and keeps it with Jesus Christ in the one true faith. In this Christian church, he daily and richly forgives all my sins and the sins of all believers. On the last day, he will raise me and all the dead and give eternal life to me and all believers in Christ. This is most certainly true. Our worship continues with our children's message. When was the last time you were really frightened and you needed to be comforted? Lots of people are really scared right now. They're afraid of what will happen in the future. They're afraid of not being able to pay their bills or not being able to pay their rent or trying to help their kids out and and not knowing how to do that exactly because everything is so different. Uh, People are afraid of getting sick or that their loved ones might get sick. What are you afraid of? Think about that for a minute. Let me hear from you. What are you afraid of? Right now, I'm scared of someone in my family getting sick. I'm afraid of going down the clubhouse ladder. I am afraid of the coronavirus, especially if it gets to my grandparents. Kenley, can you tell me something you're scared of? Um, the dark. Because it's so spooky and dark. (laughs) And I have bad dreams. Kyler, can you tell me something you're scared of? Can you say it loud? The lightning. Lightning? How come? Because it's so spooky and dark and the storm is dark. Those things are really scary. In the gospel lesson, we find that the disciples were really scared. They were in the upper room. The room was locked. And they were afraid of the Jews who had put Jesus on the cross. They they were afraid that they might be next to suffer and die. And suddenly Jesus appears, and that's frightening. But the first thing out of Jesus' mouth is, peace be with you. He says the word shalom. Shalom means peace. Look at this word, shalom. The first part of it is 
Have you ever been so frightened that your mom or dad holds you in their arms and makes that sound? Shh. It's going to be okay. Shh. Don't be frightened. It's a comforting sound, isn't it? Shh. The first part of the word shalom. Jesus offered his disciples his presence, his shalom, and it, and it calmed their troubled hearts. The second time Jesus appeared was eight days later, and Thomas hadn't seen Jesus. He had been frightened and, and grief-stricken all that time. And Jesus appears to him and gives him shalom. He even offers Thomas the opportunity to place his fingers in the wounds that Jesus has. And that gives him a sense of peace and reassurance that this is really Jesus risen from the dead. It's amazing. We really could use that word shalom right now. We could really hear that from Jesus. We need that assurance. We need not to be frightened about what might happen. Jesus is here with us. And he is offering that shalom to us each and every moment. His promise is that he is with us always, even to the end of the age. He's with us through the very difficult times that may lie ahead. Today, sometime today, gather as a family and pray together. And speak those, those things that are frightening us. Speak them out. And offer each other Jesus' peace and shalom. We'll close now by hearing our children remind us of shalom. Listen. Shalom. 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 With my 
shall sound, and the Lord shall descend, even so it is well with my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul, with my soul, it is well, it is well with my soul. Hello, St. John. I'd like to say it's good to see you all, but you're all at home, and there's just a couple of us here. Anyway, I'd like to open us up with prayer, so let us pray. Father, I thank you for this time that you've given me to bring this message, Lord. As Pastor Brian said, it's my last message as a vicar, but not the last one here at St. John. Lord, you have brought me through this time, and there has been many a doubt as I had struggled to go through the seminary. But Father, we want you here with us. We want you to open up our hearts, our minds, to receive the message you've placed on my heart today because this is your message. It's about you, Jesus, that you are the answer. You are the cure to our doubt, to our disbelief. So we thank you, and we ask this in your most precious holy name, Jesus. Amen. You know, as I was looking at this and talking with Brian, looking at the seminary about two, three semesters ago, um, I do my work on Blackboard, which is the internet. It's the EIT seminary on Blackboard. And so they always prepare us ahead of time on what books to order and give us our curriculum. Well, they're having difficulty. So two weeks after the course had started, they still didn't have Blackboard up, and they finally got it. Now we had to order our books. Now I'm three weeks behind. I was discouraged. I was... Um, upset because I didn't start on time, and now that I got started, I was four weeks behind. And it's like, you know, why even go through this? I, I just wanted to give up. I just wanted to say, I'm done. I was so discouraged. I had a lot of doubt that, you know, I, I wasn't going to complete it, so I just figure I'll just give up. Well, at that moment, I also realized, Lord, let me come to you in prayer. And so, I, you know, I came to the Lord in prayer, and I asked him, take me out of this funk, out of this um, doubt that I have, and help me get started. I just need to get through this semester and get started. And you know what? I did. And you know, I accomplished it, and I got it done at the time I was supposed to get it done. So praise the Lord for removing my doubt. So, you know, I want us to look at a couple things, and I want to tell you about doubt. It's, doubt is to call into question the truth, to be uncertain. This is from um, Webster's Dictionary. To lack confidence in. To distrust. And it's in parentheses it says, find myself doubting him even when I know that he is honest. And then I want to talk to you about conviction, which is a strong persuasion or a strong belief. The state of being convinced. And then I'll talk to you about the cure for it all. But I won't go into depth with that. So the reading of John 20 and 19 talks about fear and that they were behind locked doors. The fear that they had was the norm that they had, that the um, rituals that they were going through, the routine that they had for the last three years with Jesus, three and a half years, and it was all of a sudden upended because of his death. And they were locked behind those doors because they feared the Jews and because they feared that they would get killed. You know, and it brings us back to today. You know, during this pandemic, we have gotten out of our routine. Nothing seems to be the same. You know, against our wishes, we were told, which feels more like an order, to stay home and don't go out. And if you're like me in any way, I don't like to take orders very well. I feel cooped up. I can't do anything I want to do. My routine is forcibly taken away from me in fear of spreading the COVID-19 virus. 
we are living in disbelief. That this is actually happening to us. You know, and as we're doing that, we, it leads into anxiety, right? We are having anxiety. If you're like me, anxiety kicks in. And we handle it in different ways. Eating, whatever it might be. But in our anxi- anxiety is discouragement. Along with that discouragement, I mean, in discouragement, we get discouraged for what we're not able to do, for what we have to be forced to do. And, and we just start getting more down on ourselves. And that leads us into helplessness because all of a sudden our control is taken away. What little control we think we have, that we can't actually go and do something. And that helplessness leads to hopelessness. And when we get into that hopelessness, we start really doubting. We start disbelieving. Doubt turns into that doubt of disbelief. It brings on so much of that. And with disbelieving, we start to question, where is God? Is God actually letting this happen to us? Where is God in the midst of this pandemic? And disbelief also leads into death. Some Christians are turning away from God and believing in what man can do for us today, what they can get done, rather than God getting us through this pandemic and what God can do. And there has been more reports of suicide happening, actual deaths in the midst of those that are dying from the COVID-19. So during this pandemic, how do we stay focused on Christ Jesus? How do we not have doubt? Remember the fear that the Jews had because Jesus died? They saw him crucified. They saw him shed his blood. And now they're hiding behind locked doors because in fear that they may get killed. But guess what? It goes on to say that Jesus appeared. He appeared to them. Here Jesus is pursuing his disciples. He comes in to a locked home. And they're frightened. And they're startled. But in Luke, it says that they're star- they were startled and frightened and thought they saw a spirit. And he said to them, why are you troubled? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? See my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Touch me and see. For a spirit does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. And while they still disbelieved, for joy and were marveling. He said to them, have you anything to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish and he took it and ate before them. And as we go back to John, remember he said, peace be with you a second time. This is the assurance that he's given them. Have peace. I am real. I am here with you. Man, they had gladness. They had joy. They had excitement because Jesus showed himself to them. And they were so excited that um, Thomas wasn't there with them. So eight days later, it says that Thomas is there with them. Or be, before that eight days, let me um, slow down here. They've told him with excitement and um, disbelief. They said, we've seen the Lord. They were excited. They wanted Thomas to believe him. But yet Thomas disbelieves because he said unless I see in his hands the mark of the nails and place my finger into the mark of those nails and place my hand into his side I will never believe doubting Thomas but what conviction that Thomas had when he said that Thomas has that conviction earlier in John 11 I'm going to take you back to when Jesus was asked to come in Heal Lazarus, but yet he stayed a few days later, longer. And then he told his disciples when it was time, it's time to go back to Judea to see Lazarus. But you know what? All the disciples were telling Jesus, why do you want to go back? They want to kill you. I'm I'm paraphrasing. But they wanted to kill Jesus. That's why they left. But now Jesus wants to go back. And then Jesus shares with them why he must go back. And he says, so that you may believe. Jesus tells his disciples that. But yet, Thomas, called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, this is where he's doubting again with that conviction, let us also go that we may die with him. Even then, Thomas has doubt, 
but yet it's with strong conviction. So let's look at the words of Thomas again in John 20. Unless I see his unless I see in his hands the mark of the nails and place my finger into the mark of the nails and place my hand into his side, I will never believe. He's saying, I won't believe. Here Thomas is making a vow. I will never believe. So if you're like Thomas, or you're like me, I've made vows. I've made vows even recently and realized I did that. In the past, I made vows that I couldn't amount to much. I couldn't get it done, whatever those vows were. So we need to break those vows. And Thomas needs to break that because he said it with such conviction, such disbelief, that I will never believe. And now we come back to the eighth day where they're still in fear and they're locked in the, upper, locked in the room. Their doors are locked. Everything's shut up. And Jesus appears and says, Peace be with you. Again, Jesus pursues his disciples. He comes after them. And Jesus is alive and well. And he talks to Thomas. And it says, Thomas, here, show me. <clears throat> Here's my hands where the nails pierce. Touch them. Here's my side. Put your hand in it. And he says, do not believe, but believe to Thomas. And you know what Thomas said? Thomas answered him with that same conviction. My Lord and my God. Thomas believed. But yet Jesus questions Thomas. He says, you believe because you have seen me? And then Jesus says something that is so spectacular for you and for me. He says, blessed are those who believed without seeing me. We are blessed. For we are blessed. We didn't see Jesus, but we have known about him. So how do we know doubt? K-N-O-W. How do we know doubt? We need to know when it creeps up on us. Like when anxiety kicks in, you could feel your blood pressure going up. You know, you can call it a red flag, but you need to understand that doubt is there. Moses had doubt. Remember Moses in the burning bush? He was telling God, I, I can't speak well. You need to send Aaron. He can speak better than I can. I'm not, and he had a lot of doubt, but yet Moses went and he spoke. And so that's what we need to do. He recognized those cues. He recognized those red flags. And we need to do the same. We need to recognize what it is inside of us that's starting to capture that doubt. Because remember, doubt leads into disbelief. You know, in Romans, it says, um, in Romans 5, it says this. I want to read it. Since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through Christ Jesus, we have also obtained access by faith into this grace in which we stand. And we rejoice in hope of the glory of God. We rejoice. And not only that, but we rejoice in our sufferings. Knowing that suffering produces endurance. And endurance produces character. And character produces hope. And hope does not put us to shame. Because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us, and who resides in us. Woohoo! So for doubt, the cure to no doubt is Jesus' promises to us. Remember, he says it's written down so that we may believe. It's written in his book. It's called the Bible. All of his promises. It's more than just the one here. There's so many more. He is the Messiah. He is the Christ. He is the risen one. Remember, he also said, I will be with you until the end of this age. He's always with us. And he also said that he would send the spirit of truth to live in us, who is the Holy Spirit. He wouldn't leave us orphans. Jesus makes promises to always be there with us. So when we're in doubt, we just need to go to him in prayer and ask him to remove that doubt and replace it with his truth, with his love. So that by believing in him, 
you will have life by the power of his name. You will have that life. And you'll have life today and you'll have it more abundantly. That is his promise to us. So let's believe so we can share this life with others. Amen? Amen. Vicar Rick, thank you so much for sharing God's word with us today. It's been such a pleasure to listen to you today and, uh, and also to listen to you throughout your vicarage. Um, this is Vicar Rick's last message as our vicar. In fact, I'm not going to call you Vicar Rick anymore because your vicar just complete. I'm just going to call you Rick, if that's okay with you. <laughs> yes, uh, I was waiting for what he was going to call me, so Rick is a good surprise. I, I, I had some other ideas, but it's going to be Rick for now. <laughs> Thanks. Um, soon enough, though, we will be calling him Pastor Rick. We're going to wait for that until his ordination service, which is coming soon. You have a little bit of a word on that, right? Mm -hmm. um, yes. Rick's... Uh, seminary work has been completed. He received a letter about the certification he has mm -hmm. for being ordained in our church body. And uh, you've completed uh, really three years of vicarage experience, two here, it was oh, four. But total of four, total four, of four, almost four and a half. Yeah. Some yeah. of that you did at Anchorage Lutheran. Yep. And we're thankful for them and their support of you. And then some of that you did once you moved here to Vancouver. And uh, we're thankful for all that time spent. Yes. Um, so since your seminary work is completed, uh, you were just waiting for a call day service, huh? Can you tell us about call day? I don't know much about call day, but I do know that it's, it's like a, um, receiving a diploma. You receive a call, you'll be able to, um, what I've seen over at St. Um, Concordia, St. Louis, is that they walk up like they're receiving their diploma and they're called to a certain location. So for me, my call will be into Lutheran Indian Ministries. Of course... Tim Young Eagle said that it depended on this sermon that I did, so I'm waiting to hear back from him because I let him know that I was doing this last message. Tim, if you're watching, I think you should give him a passing grade. <laughs> <laughs> so usually you would go to St. Louis for call day, and yes. you would walk up to the front of the chapel there, but they're not doing that on site. It's going to be virtual. It's going to be virtual. They said May 15th will be the virtual. Okay. You know, I'm sure things can change be, between now and then, but... Right now, it's May 15th. Well, then we will plan on a watch party on May 15th. Watch for announcements about that on Facebook so that you can join us and join Rick, and we'll all watch together maybe from our different homes, or, God willing, if the stay-at-home directive is lifted, we'll do it here in the sanctuary together. Uh, we'll see what the plans can be. But, yes, uh, because I'll be watching it with you guys. I won't actually be there, so I'll be watching one way or the other. I'd love for us to be able to do it here. But and other than that, um, you know, and our, the ordination will be here at St. John's. So hopefully everything's lifted by that time and we can actually have real hands laid upon me that's to right. ordain me, not virtual hands. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so an ordination service will be forthcoming. And after that, then you can call him Pastor Rick. But he's no longer your vicar. So don't call him Vicar Rick anymore. For the moment, he's just Rick. I'm just Rick. I'm yeah. just a plain old everyday guy. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Soon to be pastor. Yep. Thank you, Rick, very, very much. Well, let's continue our service now with our prayers. In our prayers this morning, we will have help from our homes. We will be going to different homes for our petitions of the prayer, but let us begin the prayers with these words. We pray in the name of our risen Savior Jesus, throwing off doubt and disbelief praying confidently in faith that our God will hear us, respond to us, and he will love us with what he knows will ultimately be best for our good and his glory. Let us pray. God of finished races, Jesus said it is finished from the cross. St. Paul said he fought the good fight finished the race, and kept the faith. We pray for students and teachers who are working to complete this school year. Give them perseverance for this school year turned obstacle course so their efforts will help them grow in their vocations as educators and learners. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, you are the God of resurrection and celebration. We ask your special blessing on high school and college seniors. They have lost so many of the experiences they had looked forward to. 
Lord, lead them to know Jesus, uh, who walks with them through these losses, and help them to know what he promises to every believer, which is the crown of everlasting life, resurrection from the dead. We await and look forward to that greatest celebration in the life of the world to come. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. We bless you, Lord, for working through nurses and janitors, doctors and cooks, medical technicians and administrators, and all other workers in our hospitals who work in environments that the rest of us are trying to stay away from. Protect them from illness, support them in their healing work. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Creator and sustainer of all life, from the very beginning you got your hands dirty in this creation, making humans in your image. When we look at the work of many humans today, we can see your fingerprints all over them. Thank you for giving us first responders to come to the rescue, farmers and truckers and grocery store workers to help feed us, leaders and politicians to serve the public's interests. Lord, imprint your image on the world through them and help us to recognize your goodness through them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of the Church, we thank you for calling people to serve your church, to preach the gospel and teach the scriptures. Thank you for Vicar Rick's work among us the completion of his seminary requirements, and his certification for pastoral ministry in our church body. Oh God, bless him. Bless him with, and all of his work with Lutheran Indian Ministries, that their efforts will bring peace and healing and hope to many, many hurting people now in time, uh, but really forever in eternity. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, your son was a rabbi to his disciples, a leader to the followers, a teacher to the students, a healer for the ill, an example for his friends, and a savior for all. Guide us as Jesus' disciples in the mission field of everyday life to faithfully follow his example by loving our neighbors and, in the end, with faith to follow him into eternal life through the resurrection from the dead and the life of the world to come. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Please join me in the prayer Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Thank you, Chris, for leading us in the Lord's Prayer. And now we go to the Goth home as they give us our blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Well, thank you for that blessing, Goth family. We love you, and uh, we thank you for your presence in our service today. And now we conclude our worship with our final hymn as we sing our faith. Shall be my comfort. 
good to have that confidence. Even though we live lives where there is doubt and maybe even disbelief, our God remains faithful forever, and he loves us to the end. He's completed the work of salvation, and we stand with confidence before God because of Jesus. That's our confidence. Happy Easter, church. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Go in peace and serve your neighbor. Thanks be to God.